when you believe the word, you read the word, you are established. And then when you believe what I'm teaching you, and you apply it, you prosper. By you joining with me every day, we're able to do this and we can establish ourselves in the prosperity of God. So this week, we're going to have a look what that power of partnership is and how you can walk in it as well. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. Today, we're going to have a wonderful time of study in the area of understanding what partnership is, the power of partnership. Before we do that, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being part of the body of Christ and that you have brought us together. And no matter who's watching this, wherever they are, we know that this is not by accident, but by your design. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the word of God. And we pray that the word would speak to each and every one of us in a powerful way today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. What is partnership? You know, we hear the term thrown around and and sometimes people have asked, what is it? And I don't know if I can afford to be a partner because somehow sometimes it looks like unless you give money, you can't be a partner. That's not entirely true. There is a financial implication, but partnership is much more than that. Partnership is a powerful principle that God has introduced. Remember, God, at the whole beginning, the whole crux of it, the whole foundation is that God is a family. We know Him to be Father. And as our Father, He gave, he, he, He's created mankind. Adam was called the Son of God. And we know that when He created man, He then took Eve out of Him, a male and female, and together they had children. And so we see He's a God of families. We talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There we see the generations being brought in there. And so very much God is a family. And then we see Jesus later on when he talks about uh, the kingdom of God and how he talks to his father. And we see that his father responds to us. And he talks about the very, he talks about us being the body of Christ. And then Paul takes on that teaching and talks about the various aspects of the body, like the finger and the hand, he talks about the eye and and the ear and, and each part doing its share. What's that all about? Why so much around family and, and body and parts and that? Well, God never ever created any person to be a lone wolf, just to be on their own and to be able to, you know, I don't need anybody. I just me and mine. And then I just serve God on my own. There definitely is a reason for coming together, standing together, working together. And today, as we look at this from the Word of God, we want to have a look and see what does it mean to be a partner? What is the difference between a partner, for example? Uh, we, we have friends. You and I have friends. You've got family members. You've got dad, mom, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts. You've got that tight unit of family. And then you've got people on the fringes of the family. And then you have people that come into your life, and sometimes there's a friend that's even closer than, the brother, than a brother the Bible talks about. And so what does it mean to be a friend? We also know that there's many organizations out there that are doing very good work, feeding schemes and that type of thing, and people will give donations to support that. And so you've got partners, you've got supporters, you've got friends. What is the difference between all of that? Because it's not just the giving of money that makes a person a partner. You know, if I see a really good organization out there, I believe is doing a lot of good work, and I want to be a part of that, and I want to support that, I may send a gift to them, a donation. That makes me a supporter. I've donated. But I may not be in partnership with them. And many people have joined with us as partners, and I want every one of our partners to receive the full benefit of what that partnership is. And so we're going to have a look at it from the Word of God because the Word is what defines the partnership. We, man didn't come up with the idea. It's God's idea. It's God-ordained. And if it's God's idea and God-ordained, then there is a God power within it that you and I can tap into. 
and we can enjoy that power as part of the partnership. It's just simply recognizing that the gift is available and then partaking of it. It's, I've said it so many times before. The Bible says that God would have that none should perish. And God so loved the world that He gave His Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. And so that means the salvation is available to anybody who would desire for it. But I don't receive it until I say, I want it. And only when I said, Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my Savior, did my salvation manifest in my life. The same way He took every infirmity on the cross. He bore away every sickness and every disease. He paid the full price for you and me to be healed. And for years I walked around not knowing that. And so would battle with diseases. And as you know, my wife was almost destroyed by a terrible disease. And then we found out from the Word of God that by Jesus' stripes she has been healed. And when we saw that, believed it and received it, we could draw the benefit of that. And as a result of drawing it, she was miraculously healed. And we give God praise for that. Amen. And so that's what I want us to recognize, that for years you may have already been in partnership and not even realized that you were. And as a partner, there are benefits. There's kingdom provision that you can draw on. And so we want to spend this week just exploring that and discovering and understanding what it means to be a partner and how you can draw the benefits from God's provision as a partner. See, a partnership is more than just simply joining a club. Uh, You know, if I decided I wanted to play golf, I'd probably say, all right, there's a few different golf courses around in town. Some I may have to drive a little further to go and see them. And before joining, what I might do is go and play a game on each course and see which one I really like. Uh, Maybe see how their facilities operate, watch how they look after them and and, and how do they look after you as as a customer there. And then you may be led to say, okay, well, I I, I decide I'm going to join this club over here because I like their facilities. And so you sign up and now you remember. And then you pay your membership dues. And as a member of that club, you get certain privileges. And so, you know, maybe a discount on, on the round that you play there. If you bring people, you know, there's different ways they can say, right, as a member, you get these advantages. That's just joining a club. When I drive out from my game of golf, we may talk about it afterwards. If I had a really bad game, try and forget it. But the point I'm making is that there's no affiliation there, really. It's, it's just part of my life, and it's, it's a golf club, and, and I'll use it when I go and play there now and then. But when it comes to partnership, it's more than just joining as a member as of a club. You're coming into a covenant relationship a covenant relationship. Now, we have studied covenant many times before, and we will again in the future. Just a quick reminder, covenant is when two parties come together, and maybe one party is weak in one area, and another one is strong in that area, and vice versa. So, for example, if you had two clans, two tribes, one tribe may be really great in farming and produces great produce, but they don't have a very strong military team, a military army. Whereas this other clan, they got, they're got they very strong and powerful from a military perspective, but they don't have the facilities to produce enough food for everybody. And so those two tribes, this one tribe may be constantly attacked for their food, but they are unable to defend themselves. So they will come to this other military tribe and say, we want to come into covenant with you. What that means is that we're going to join as if though we were one tribe. And you will fight our battles for us. And they may say, but why why would we do that? Why do we have to protect you? And then this other tribe would say, well, in that case, we will feed you. We will give you all the food that you need. And so we can see that there's an exchange taking place. They have the food and they exchange that food for the right and privilege to be protected by this military tribe. And so they come together, the chiefs come together, they may cut each other's wrists and and join their wrists so that they come into what they call a blood covenant. And then as that group, as that great tribe, they become very powerful, maybe the most powerful tribe 
in that region because now they got wealthy food and they got this phenomenal military presence. And so news gets out and all of a sudden all these other little tribes that were just attacking for the food, knowing that it was a weak tribe, suddenly have to all back off because now this tribe is just upgraded as far as military is concerned. And the military have got stronger because now they got good nutrition and good food. And so now a new relationship exists, a covenant relation. That tribe will stay as one for the rest of time. And so the same way Jesus did that with you and me. He gave his life. We had nothing. We were weak. We were destroyed. Our sin means that we had lost our connection with God. We were destined to an eternity of hell. But God in his great power sent his son Jesus and through the shedding of his blood we were able to come into covenant he paid the price said I want to join with you and this is the powerful thing this is the amazing thing about the grace of God you and I even as that weak tribe we had nothing to offer We, we, we didn't even have the food to feed this military army we really said we got nothing God said no but I want you you are my covenant agreement. I want your life as a relationship. I want to be one with you. And so we give our lives to God. We say, if we give our life to you, then we receive all the covenant benefits. That means we are now part of the family of God for eternity. We're born again. That means we have right and access to all the privileges of heaven, healing and deliverance and provision. And and of course, the most important eternal life with God, to know him and to walk with him and be in fellowship with him. And that's what we talk about when we say covenant. And so by the same token, when we come together as a family, we recognize that God calls different people with different callings. And we know that it's the most important thing is that the gospel be preached around the world. The Bible says that the gospel needs to be taught and then Jesus will return. And so it is your and my responsibility to preach that gospel. Maybe someone says, but I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. When Jesus says, go make disciples and teach them everything. Maybe somebody says, but I don't have the gift or the ability to be a teacher. But I do. And so me as the teacher, as the one that has the ability to speak to masses and lead people to Jesus and to teach and equip others to lead people to Jesus one by one, when people say, you know what, I don't have much to offer, but I do have the ability to make sure that you can preach. And then I say, but I can preach, but I may not have the platform. But coming together, we are able to get the job done. And so we come into a covenant agreement where we say, I'm here for you, you are here for me, and together we can get this gospel preached around the world. And so it's a joint effort to be able to achieve the same goal and accomplish the same mission. If your mission is, your desire is that others get to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you really enjoy this teaching and you say, you know what, I'm enjoying and I'm benefiting from the teaching that I get here week after week, day after day. I want this ministry around the world. I want to see others. Others need to hear this gospel. We need to get into the prisons. We need to get to places where people haven't even been to yet. We need to get into towns where they may not have this kind of teaching. But you saying, I do have it and I want others to get it. And then you can come into agreement, into partnership with us. And as a result, we can do the work. And so we of the same mission, same vision. We come into agreement and partnership. The job can get done. And really, there's a key to this. I want to show this to you. If you come with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And something very interesting happened here. Uh, We know that the enemies had come against King Jehoshaphat and they were ready to destroy them. And so uh, there were three large nations that were ready to take out this uh, Judah. And any one of them on their own could have destroyed Judah. But King Jehoshaphat called a fast and he asked God to please give a solution. And as they were fasting, a prophet stood up and spoke and said that they've not lost the battle. The battle is the Lord's. They have the victory. All they need to do is go down to the battlefield. And then uh, something interesting is said over here. Jehoshaphat says in verse 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, 
So they arose early in the morning. They went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Listen to this now. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Isn't that interesting as a statement? Listen to what he's saying here. Believe the Lord your God, you will be established. The most important thing for any of us ever is to hear the word of God. Remember the Bible says in in Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe, number one, that he is And then number two, believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, if it's impossible to please God without faith, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I have to hear the word of God. You and I wouldn't be saved if we hadn't heard the word of God. The Bible says, for by grace you are saved. How? By faith. See, it's not a result of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. And so we need to hear the gospel that God loves us, that Jesus died for us, gave his life for us. He paid the price for our sin and then rose from the dead. And today he is alive, proving our sins are forgiven. So when we hear that truth, we now have the faith. That that seed of that word deposits the faith and that faith enables us to speak and react on it. And as a result of doing that, we are born again. So now we're established. We are established in the Word of God. When you hear that God provides your every need, you're established in that. When you hear that by His stripes you've been healed, you're established in that. Your faith grows stronger and stronger in that. But now, for that faith to work, it has to be put into action. And when you look in the Word of God, it tells us what God has done. He says, go make disciples. He says, if you call on me, I'll answer. Lay hands on their sick and they will recover. But now how do you activate that? And so when you see here, they knew God was their covenant protector, but they didn't have specific instructions. But then the prophet heard from God, spoke on behalf of God to the people and gave them specific instructions based on the foundation of the Word of God. And so when they carried out the instructions as the prophet had given, then what God had established in the Word of God was able to manifest and produce in their lives, and that's called prosperity. So prosperity is the outward working, the activation of the Word of God. Prosperity is not just money. That's where sometimes people miss it. When you talk about prosperity, they immediately hear about the dollars and cents or the rands and cents, whatever your currency may be. Prosperity is much more spiritual. It has to do with your mental mind, the soul realm. Beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We know that the health is prosperity, being in strong health, relationships, and of course, finances are involved as well. Now that's prosperity. Prosperity is the ability to act on God's word and whatever you need in that moment will manifest. Whatever you need to deliver or to heal or to supply or to speak, it's available and that's prosperity. Now that prosperity is available to you. The word says in Psalm 35 verse 27, God is pleased in the prosperity of his servant that shows that prosperity is an outworking of faith because without faith it's impossible to please God and prosperity pleases God. So it's an outworking of faith. Now, in order to prosper, I have to have instructions to walk in and when I apply those instructions, then the word that God has established in my life manifests. So with that, see what King Jehoshaphat was saying. He says, believe the Lord your God. You do. And then you are established. When you believe his prophets, you will prosper. So God brings men and women of God into your life to take the word that you already know. That's why very often when you listen to message, you go, amen, yes, I see that, I agree. But it's more than that. They're activating you and propelling you into action. And by propelling you into action, now you can prosper. And so you can see God brings me into your life 
into your home through this medium of television, through CDs or MP3s, whatever you're listening to the Word of God through. And by me speaking into your life, you see the action that you need to apply. And so when you believe the Word, you read the Word, you are established. And then when you believe what I'm teaching you and you apply it, you prosper. And so there you can see already there's an advantage of our partnership. By you joining with me every day, we're able to do this and we can establish ourselves in the prosperity of God. So this week we're going to have a look what that power of partnership is and how you can walk in it as well. And so we want to share with you something about it. Watch this and I've got something else to show you at the end. I'll see you later. When you partner with Allen Bag Ministries, you are joining forces with a ministry focused firmly on equipping believers so they can flourish in their ministry and calling. Your partnership is helping many viewers across the world receive encouragement and faith-building word through our television program, Wisdom for Life. As our partners, you are assisting many women to step into their God-given purposes and be a significant difference in the community. You are part of supporting and training children in the ways of God, so they are adequately prepared for kingdom living as children of the Most High God. Your partnership also reaches into the lives of many youth and young adults, equipping many youth to pursue God and allowing Him to quench their thirsts. Your partnership also helps many people overcome strongholds, as well as help transform marriages and strengthen relationships in many homes. When you partner with Allen Bag Ministries, you are also part of many students being trained on Christian Family Church International Bible College here at the Bay. Allen Bag Ministries helps set many free in prisons, helps bring healing to many in hospitals, and feed many hungry in creches and schools on a weekly basis. As partners, you help us equip many in the community through various skills development programs, practically equipping many with entrepreneurial skills to help improve their value in the marketplace. These are some of the many platforms your partnership is impacting. For those who are already partners with Allen Bag Ministries, thank you for the amazing difference you are helping us make. If you would like to partner with Allen Bag Ministries, please contact us at these details and we will assist you with any information you may need. Thank you for your partnership. Together, we can make a difference. We value our partners very highly. We know that God has brought us together as a body and every part of the body is vitally, vitally important. No man can do it on his own. And through partnership, we're able to achieve everything that God has called us to do. This world needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's because of great partners that have come alongside us and worked together with us that we're able to achieve that. And if the Lord is speaking to you today to say, yes, I want to be a partner. I want to be a part of this great work. I want to be a part of ministering the gospel of Jesus. You may not be a preacher. You may not be an evangelist. But when you partner with us, you are doing that work with us. You are ensuring that others hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so if the Lord has moved in your heart and say, yes, I want to partner with Allen Bag Ministries today. You can call us on that number, write to us at that address. You can go on our website and sign up there. It's real easy today with the use of technology. And when we get your details saying, yes, I want to be a partner, we're going to send this to you free of charge. This is the power of partnership, a powerful, dynamic message which teaches the in-depth study of what it means to be a partner and how it works in the body of Christ and how it's going to work in your life as a partner with the ministry. And then we also send you this partner pack. And in the partner pack, you're going to get a certificate. That certificate will certify that you are a covenant partner with us. And as a result of that, you get a partner card. And that card will enable you to be able to get discounts on our products. Because uh, we want to teach the Word of God and get it to you as quickly and easily and efficiently as possible. And of course, with our partners, we're able to do that. And then there's a bunch of other information as well. So that partner pack will come along with that message. And we thank God that He can bring us together this way and we can achieve so much. Amen. Well, if you've never yet given your life to Jesus Christ, the best partnership begins with when you come into the body of Christ, when you give your life to Jesus. Whether you partner with this ministry or any other ministry, 
That is all an outworking of your initial life in the kingdom of God. And if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, I want to ask you to do it today. God loves you. He gave his life for you. He paid for your sin and then rose from the dead to prove you're forgiven. And all you have to do today is believe that. The Bible says if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he is Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Let's pray together. There, where you're watching, just say this out loud with me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you. You love me. And because you love me, you died for me. You gave your life so that I could have life. And then you rose from the dead, showing that you have forgiven me. You forgave all my sins, and I receive that today. I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. And from this day, I choose to serve you, to honor you. One day, I will leave this earth and stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. That prayer means that you are now saved, a child of God. I want to send you this. This is a card that's going to explain to you what's happened and some guidelines now that you are a Christian. And this study program is going to lead you to lead, read through your Bible cover to cover in one year. And then also this wonderful CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure and His Kingdom of Victory. That is our free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. If you could write to me at that address or call us on those phone numbers, and then as soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you. Welcome home. Well, that's all we got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. And this is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless. At alanbaggministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bagg, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Allen Bank Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Allen Bank Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do.